everybody, Eric Dillman here, and welcome back to another episode of the Pro Series Podcast. This is episode 37 with Susan and Paul Cadillac. They are the owners of Cadillac Homes up in Boston, Massachusetts. They have their own TV show in Boston called Renovation Rekindle. They tell us about their app that allows anybody to watch their show wherever. And then we also go over some design topics and also how they got started in the business. But before we start the episode, make sure you head over to wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe, rate, and review the Pro Series podcast. And now I hope you enjoy episode 37 with Susan and Paul Cadillac. Thank you so much, Susan and Paul, for joining me today on the Pro Series podcast. So excited to talk to you. Thanks for having us. We're yes. excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah. I always like to start out the episode on how I discovered you guys. And it was actually Penelope who works with you guys reached out to me as she's a listener, which was pretty cool to hear um, her perspective on how she found me. And as soon as I looked you guys up, I was like, I have to talk to you guys. You guys <laughs> are completely different from what I have interviewed in the sense that you do have a show, but it's not on HGTV and you're taking it to a completely different platform that I've never seen before. Um, which is really cool to show other people how to market themselves with in the show and also on social media. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's been a, a long, you know, thing for, for us that's led us to that. So we've been, I've been in the business pretty much my whole life. My dad was a contractor. My grandfather was a contractor. So I kind of grew up, you know, in the construction business. And then, yeah, when I met Susan, she was already building. Um, I was in sales at the time, and then I was trying to get on the fire department locally here. And then I eventually got on, and then I was like, I'm going to learn how to like golf or something, you know, because I get some time. And then she's like, No, you're going to work. So, you know, I was always handy, but I never knew construction in depth. And that's how it started kind yeah. of from there. I was you like, know. How many days are you at the fire department? How? Oh, no, you can come. You can come on the construction site on those other days. <laughs> yeah, there's a misconception that I brought her into construction, but it's actually quite the opposite. So how hard was it going from sales to construction? I mean, I, I felt like I was handy. Uh, the construction side, too, you got to, I guess, kind of sell yourself on jobs. Right. But I really was learning the trade itself, not really yeah. learning the sales pieces of it. Right. So Susan was doing a lot of that. And uh it was also like during the recession. I mean, I was doing, I, she really had me come in at the right time because I was <laughs> doing not glamorous work at all. You know, we're digging like holes in basements and replacing lally columns with dirt mm -hmm. floors and structural yeah, work. Yeah, struck nothing, no. nothing Instagram worthy no. or Pinterest or anything like that yeah. for sure. Absolutely not. Yeah, but it's like being in the trenches, learning those pieces and knowing what other guys have to do and how they do it is, is super, super helpful as we, you know, grow the company and as we ask people to do things and try to figure out solutions, you know, cause I feel like that's construction as a whole is problem solving, right? People call okay. you cause they got a problem. So the question is, what's the problem? Why are we here? What do we need to look at and fix? And then look at the whole picture, not just that one issue. Okay. So is Cadillac um, homes, is that, was that part of your growing up Susan, or is that something you guys both created together? Yeah, so that's something we both created together. So, okay. you know, it, it's such a cool last name. I was like, okay, we, we need to use this last name. <laughs> oh, she's like, I guess I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> I was I'll like, if, you. I, if I marry you, do I get to use that last name? Oh, okay, fine. So when did um, the home building start? And you're, well, I mean, you have a th almost a three-parter to this Cadillac Homes brand, but yep. when did, what came first and how did it start? So I, um, you know, like I said, just growing up, my dad was a builder and my grandfather was a builder. So I, um, you know, we do real estate, we do the construction, we do the design. So we, um, when I was actually, I was 20 when I got my real estate license. So I've been in real estate since then. Then I got my builder's license when I was 23 and then built my first house. Um, so I've been, I've kind of been in all of it for pretty much my whole career, um, and then, yeah, I mean, we were, you know, we were building a little bit before the recession, but then the recession came and, you know, obviously a lot of builders stopped building, including us. And we shifted to different types of work, um, you know, and then we've, you know, we're been back to building for a while now and we do client renovations. We do um, properties that we purchase and rebuild, um, you know, so there's all those different pieces to it. That's crazy. I've had a lot of real estate agents on, but I've never what all goes along with getting a builder's license? 
So the builder's license here and, you know, here and we're in Massachusetts. So, I mean, that's, you know, you have to have a certain amount of experience. You have to, you know, take some classes, you have to pass a test, you have to, you know, it's a trade and, and you've got to have, you know, time in the field. So, you know, luckily we, you know, in my situation, I had that. So, um, but it's just been, you know, like I set up my family, I came from a family of builders is kind of what they did. So it just kind of felt like a, you know, yes, I want to do this. Um, and it's funny because growing up, they always had us on job sites. I, I don't know why, um, <laughs> but I have an older brother and they used to let him do everything. Like he could go in the trucks and they would tell me I couldn't do it because I was a girl and that would just get me mad. So that's probably another reason why I gravitated towards it. <laughs> gotcha. So do you do some of the contracting work as well? So, yeah. So I used to be like, now we have so many projects that's, you know, I'm not on site on every project as much. I'm more going project to project to project every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the beginning I was, you know, on the job sites every day and, wow. you know, being in it. Yeah. I, I think the, the unique priest, the, if I could talk, the unique piece. <laughs> okay, Susan fine. Brings, you can talk now, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the unique piece that she brings to it is the um, having that real estate background. So, you know, we'll go to clients' houses and we'll say, okay, what are you guys looking to do? Okay, we want to put an addition on, for example. Okay, we'll look at the value of the house as it is, look at the cost of the addition, then look at over renovation, and then look at what would the end value be? And then does that all make sense, right? So, you know, it's just talking through options, right? People want to have options at the end of the day. Nobody likes to be like, you can only do this. You know, that's just not what people want. And um, we try to be very transparent with our clients, you know, in that sense, because like you said, information is very easy to get nowadays. It's not like, I've said this before, like the blue book, when you buy a car, you got to look in, oh, what's, what, you know, the, the deal is the only one who has that blue book and they're the ones who know it and nobody else does. Well, that, that doesn't exist anymore. That's gone, you know, so people can find the information, they can find out about you. So we always try to focus on kind of what we do. Um, you know, not like, oh, this builder is doing this, 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 you know, there's a lot of good builders, a lot of good contractors, a lot of good designers, you know, a lot of good real estate. And so, you know, we just try to stay in our lane of kind of what, what we feel is right for us and, and focus on that. Cause it can, you know, distractions as I'm sure you're aware, you know, they're super, super easy <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, to come across uh, during a, a period of a day where, you know, the phone's going this, this, this. So we just try to stay in our lane, so to speak, and do what we feel is the best for the clients. Yeah, I, I think it's smart to have all three, the real estate renovations and the building, because once you get someone in their house, you know, 10 years later, they're going to want to do some other construction process, which I think I don't know how other people aren't really doing that. That's like a very smart business move. Yeah, but I mean, to me, it always felt like they're all, you know, sort of related. I mean, yeah, yeah the, I mean, it's kind of. It's kind of like, uh, you know, Susan, when, when I came into the business with her, she would always do the design because she just always thought that that was just part of it as being the contractor, I, not, you know, not, you know, not really realizing that it's kind of a lot of people do it separately. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I thought every contractor did design until a client, he talked to a client and they were like, you know, he said, why did you go with us? And, you know, it kind of came down to the design and I said, well, don't all contractors do design. I just, I had no idea. Yeah, we will fight <laughs> yeah. with our clients in a good way and be like, this is not going to be good. We are, you know, cause it's more of like, we want it to be really special for them and you no know, people hire you cause they don't know, you know, right. They, yeah. they think they know, but and things work on paper all the time, but in the real world, you know, you got to tweak and, and make changes and mold it, you know, the kind of best it can be along the way. And that's, right. that's what we do. It might take a little bit longer to tweak and step back and look, but it puts a much better product out at the end of the day for people. Yeah. I mean, Susan, I think that's like a lot of your upbringing with the design and contracting, because I know in my area, contractors will design, but it's not, it doesn't go very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always, I mean, as we go into a house, like into a house, like Paul said, like, we'll, we'll have a client who might call us and say, we don't know what we want to do. We, we might want to move. We might want to renovate. We might want to knock our house down. We don't know. So we'll go in and do that kind of looking at all the pieces. Here's what the house is worth here's your wish list and what it would cost to do that. Is the house going to hold that value? Or, you know, if we knock it down and rebuild it, here's your budget, here's what it's worth. Or maybe this house isn't worth investing in, but it's also not worth knocking down. Maybe you need to sell it and relocate. So, you know, we kind of go in looking at all the options for the client, not just, you know, not just one thing. So, you know, we have clients who do, you know, all different things. We have some clients who come to us and say, I want to build, they end up moving. And then, you know, like you said, a few years later, they say, okay, we're ready to do a kitchen or, you know, whatever it is. Absolutely. So with your real estate 
Is it your own brokerage or are you part of yes. another brokerage? Oh, wow. Yeah, yep, we have our own brokerage. Wow. They're control freaks, if you couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. <laughs> That's yeah, it's just, cool. it's, it's, you know, I think we brought it in house because we were with a couple of the brokerages, but, you know, it's just more control what we can give to the agents, what we can do for them. You know, it's, we kind of really, you know, we kind of go by like, you know, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. There's plenty of money to make for everybody out there. You know, it's, it's just, there's no need to be, you know, one way, you know, it's just yeah. more, it's more of a controlling, but in a good way, if that makes sense. Yeah. Are you selling a lot of only like your projects or is it, you just will go and sell anything. No, we do. We do regular residential real estate. So we, you know, so we have clients who are just regular buyers. who are only doing the real estate part. We have sellers who are only doing the real estate part. Um, you know, with the <laughs> construction background, I have a lot of builder clients who want me to list their projects because I can answer construction questions as and the, the design estate. questions. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So we'll list it. They'll say, "Okay, Susan, you pick the paint. You pick, you know, whatever right. all the stuff that needs to be picked." So. You know, so we kind of bring all pieces into every, you know, into everything that we do, no matter how the client is coming in or what they need. I think sometimes there's like a disconnect between, you know, um, you know, the, a lot of the countries are like, yeah, just pick what you want. We'll put it in. You know, they don't want to be bothered with the design. The designers want the pretty. They don't want to be bothered with how it actually goes in. So there's a little bit of a disconnect sometimes with that kind of stuff. And I think that's where Susan really works so well with our guys, because like, you know, at the end of the day, when she shows up, they know something's going to be a pain, right? But yeah. they also know the end result's going to be that much better. Right. And, and they know I'm not leaving until they agree. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. And they, and they also, you know, it's, you know, they're very respectful of her on the job. They know she knows what she's talking about. They're not just like brushing up. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You know, they, they, she can sit there. She doesn't need me by any means ever at the job. You know, she can go there herself and do run the job, look at the structure, you know, do all that stuff. So okay. um, it's, 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 kind of crazy now when we look at it because it's like I'm, I'm a firefighter and an emt because they go hand in hand right so like the construction the real estate the design it's kind of a similar concept right they kind of all you know hold each other's hands even though yeah. they're, they're different things how do you guys balance all of that and I mean, personal life too <laughs> yeah so we've got four kids and we have you know we've got all this going on so i think you know, for us, it's just like, there's, there's always a lot going on and always yeah. chaos. So it's, it's controlled chaos. <laughs> you know, yeah. We try to control as much. Yeah. As but you, can. you both seem like people that have to have that in their lives. Like you can't like sit still. I'm kind of, oh, the same yeah. Way. Oh. yeah, no, we definitely, neither one of us can sit still. So, I mean, we have an amazing team, both in the field, you know, and in the office, our team is, you know, is they're, they're great. And, um, you know, and just trying to prioritize, you know, okay, like what, you know, what do we need to do today? And then just trying to always keep an eye on, you know, kind of looking day by day, week by week and figuring out, figuring out everything that needs to be done and, you know, just figuring out a way to get it done. I think if we had to stop and think about <laughs> yeah. balance and it may be, you know, maybe one day is all work and maybe one day is all no work. So, you know, every day is different. It's not necessarily trying to balance one day in particular, so to speak, it could, it could be that one day we are all in working from 6 a.m. to midnight. Um, but, you know, then there might be another day where, you know, it's just the kids all day. So I think it that for us is more balanced than trying to, you know, than, than trying to make a day balanced, so to speak. Yeah, if you went skydiving, when you jump out of the plane, you don't have time to think, right? You're right. already out. You just, just go. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm gone. Whether the chute opens or not, something's happening, right? So it's exactly. just like you, you just jump out and go and just try to, you know, get as many things right along the way as you can. So it just kind of transitions and smooth is smooth down the road, you know, but yeah. it's always bumps and bruises, but you know, it's it, nothing. I always say nobody's dying. You know what I mean? Like it's very, yeah, it's not uh, it, it, exactly. Like it's construction. It can get fixed. You know, right. and sometimes you got to talk people, you know, when you kind of put it in that perspective, sometimes people they're like, okay, you know, they can understand that and right. be like, there's right. always problems, you know, on whether it's real estate or construction, you know, something comes back on a title or, you know, something comes in wrong or something comes in damage. It's, you know, it's going to happen. You deal with it and you keep going. Exactly. Right. You, you, you can't just tell a client like, oh, your cabinet came in damage. I'm sorry. We have to wait another 12 weeks, right? right. Your yeah. kitchen can't be done after you've had no kitchen for six months already or whatever it is. Right. So you got to figure out you know, our team is really good and, and our guys are good about shifting gears quickly, right? So it's like, you got to, okay, here's the problem. What are the options for the solution? We can wait and order another cabinet. We can fix a cabinet ourselves. We can make a cabinet and have our painter paint, you know, 
this, oh, yeah. you know, what can we do? Cause we don't hamper the clients with those type of issues. Cause they don't want, they, you know, they're already stressed out enough as it is, you know, right. with the project oh, itself. Yeah. So like call and be like, yeah, your cabinet came and damaged. Like it just gets, you know, it, it, they start going crazy and totally understand why. So we try to say, okay, what's the problem. Then we bring them a solution or we might not even tell them that that happened. We'll just fix it and then just keep going, you know, right. so okay. keeping them less stress means right. less stress for us. Right. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Right. I, that's a, I think that what weeds the companies out with design and construction is like, if you can't multitask or stay on your toes and expect something bad could happen, because it pro- it's 100% something's going to happen at every job. Of course. Um, yeah. I, totally. You always have to be on your toes with that. And then with the personal life, like work-life balance being such a huge thing during COVID, that's the main reason I asked you, but I mean, so many people ask that and want that in their job. But I think that's all your mindset. You have to personally make your time for whatever you're trying to balance out in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, there's one thing we all have in common and that's 24 hours in a day, right. right? You choose what you want to do with that 24 hours. So, you know, it just depends. Some people want to relax more. Some people want to work more. It's really, you know, what, whatever people feel, you know, they're drawn to really. Exactly. So let's get into your renovation show renovation kindle um renovation rekindle, rekindle that's rekindle. right because we want to rekindle your flame with the house <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes um so you were saying off camera it was on tv originally in your area in new england yep so it oh, airs yeah. here in new england on um necn um but nationally if someone wants to see it we have an app called renovation rekindle that you can download and there's 10 episodes of the show on there plus some other content awesome so for those who I've watched a couple episodes off the app and some snippets on your social media platforms, can you uh, give us a little bit of background on what you do in the episodes and what the show is all about? Yeah, so the show really came from, so we've been putting videos out on social media for about almost five years now. So we've, you right. know, we've been putting, you know, different videos out every week. And as yeah, a mentor kind of a mentor of us kind of said, you got to do video. You guys need to do okay. this is a few years ago. Yeah. And, and I was like, I'm never going on video. <laughs> I hate watching myself on video. I hate hearing myself on video. I'm never doing it. And I'm she, with you on that. so, you know, ultimately we did it. We kind of jumped in and we did it. And, you know, it, it was actually, it was funny because they were supposed to be real estate videos. And I said, oh. I don't want to mess up put up, you know, real estate videos that aren't good. So I said, let's practice on the construction company because nobody's going to watch those. So we started doing some construction company videos and then they, you know, they started kind of taking off and getting some, you know, they were doing well, Um, you know, so we kept doing them. And then after a year of putting out videos that were not that good, but we put them out, (laughs) um, our revenue went up 60% the first year. So I was like, you know what? Wow. I'll get over getting, you know, being on yeah. video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really incredible what the videos can do for a business, you know, because you're really, you know, look, I'm sure that there's people that watch our videos or watch when it doesn't see me and go, oh my gosh, this, that guy drives me crazy, right? So I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I understand that, right? But I am some people's cup of tea. And those are people, the ones that reach out to us and call right. us, you know, and say, hey, you know, they like what we do. You know, the thing for me is like, you know, maybe it comes from being a firefighter, but it's like, you know, life gets real serious a lot. You got to have fun too. Right. You know, and, yeah. and that's what I was trying to look at is like, like doing a renovation is supposed to be one of the most exciting things in your life, but it's yeah. also one of the scariest things for people too. So it's right. like, how do you, it's balancing that for clients and being like, Hey, it's okay to have fun and spend money. Right. It's like, <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm trying to teach them. Like, look, you know, we always have this goal. Like we don't want people to ever leave the house you know susan and i love our house we don't go out because we love being home you know so like we always talk about like if you really don't like your house you probably tend to go out more because you're you know you go to a job you may or may not like you come home to a house you may or may not like and then you know you're never really in this this comfort of your own house where you can really you know dial in hang out with your kids or you you have friends and family over or work you know whatever it is but you know the having that comfort of home is is huge i feel like for people and seeing it firsthand with them as we've done these renovations and like sat there in the room with people where they pull these blindfolds off and see the house for the first time it's like it's overwhelmingly yeah. emotional for people and oh, it's yeah. so cool to be part of that and see the reaction to it because the whole time you know susan's very humble she's like i hope they like it and i'm like are you kidding me this is insane this is of course they're gonna like it this is beautiful you know she always knocks it out of the park with the design and she always listens to what clients 
tell her, you know, we, uh, it's funny how she can extract from a few things a client might say out of their head and put that into the real world and the reality of what they really oh, yeah. want, you know? So it's, it's really listening to what, what works for them. And the thing that's great is she really knows space and size and how it has to get done. So she can talk to the guys about how to do it or their options. You know, we've had friends that are like, Oh yeah, my plumber said we couldn't move this pipe. Well, like you absolutely can move that pipe. What are you talking about? You know, like, yeah. so it's like, sometimes guys will say things because they don't want to do it. They're being, maybe they're being a little lazy. Maybe they don't want to do it. Maybe they've had a long day already, or they got to go to another job or, you know, whatever the case. Right. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like trying to BS her, so to speak, doesn't really work. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, they would so never do that to no, me. They would. They, <laughs> the guys are good about it. They are, you know, but we also appreciate our crew. Like they're very good. All, yeah. Everybody that works with us is, they really is are. Good. we'll bring yeah. in pizza or donuts or coffee, you know, whatever. Like you got to show, show them that even though yeah. we're a pain, yeah, even though we're a pain in the butt, right? <laughs> we yeah. appreciate that you tolerate us, you know, and deal yeah. with that. I, I think it's funny that you said, um, Susan listens to the customers because I just said, I went back to my um, alma mater last week to talk to design students. And I said, the biggest thing that you have to do is listen to the client. And they kind of like laughed at me. Like, like, what are you talking about? Like, obviously you have to listen to the client. And I'm like, well, a lot of designers are designing for their portfolio and they're not really listening to the client. And it's okay if you personally don't like the design because you're not the one living in it. So it's, I just thought that was ironic that you said that. Just, it's funny you say that sometimes because people will ask us, what do you think? I'm like, it doesn't really matter what I think. As long yeah. as you love it at the end of the day, like you got to live here, not me. So like, do you love it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all that matters. Yeah. I mean, know? my yeah. job, it's funny. I had a client in her office yesterday and I, I said to her this, you know, we're not picking anything. This is a therapy session. You know, we're going through pictures. We're it's going, all therapy. it's all therapy. Right. So I just need to know what you're drawn to because ultimately they want a designer because like they know what they like, but they might not know. They know what they like when they see it, but they may not be able to pick it or they may not be able to put it together or they may not, they can identify it when they see it, but they may not be able to say, this is how it all goes. So, you know, Mm -hmm. my position with the client is to figure out what are they drawn to? What are they looking to achieve? And how do I put that all together in a way that they're going to love it? So that's, you know, so sometimes they get stressed out when I say, we're going to look at lighting because they're afraid that if they say, I like that, that all of a sudden we're ordering it and it's going in. And I'm like, no, no, I'm like, we're. We're just looking. We're not buying. We're window shopping. That's what I call it. We're window shopping. So we, you know, we look, we talk through and we don't pick anything during that session because I need to know, you know, what, what they're drawn to. And that's, you know, ultimately that is what is going to make it feel like home for them. I mean, I've literally heard her tell clients, like we've had clients say, I love that tile you put on that project. And can we use that? And she's like, no. And they're like, why? She's like, cause that was picked for them and that's special for them. And we want your house to be special for you. Right. So it's like, you know, you could easily copy paste a lot of things, but it also doesn't make it feel like it's for them. Everybody likes to feel special and it exactly. wants to feel custom for them and their style. People have a style. They just don't know how to articulate it sometimes. And I think that's what, that's where the design pieces come in and they're like, okay, you know, and even, you know, the, the cooler thing I think is that it really opens up people's eyes to colors and things like that. Right. Yeah. Cause a lot of people go safe with the grays and the whites. I mean, that thing that's been going on for like 15 years now. Right. Gray, white, gray, white, gray, oh. white, blue, you know, it's like crazy. Right. But Susan's like, listen, she'll do pops of color or she'll do something completely different. People are like, I, I, I would never pick that, but I love that. You know? So it's like, opening up their eyes to different things like that, that, you know, can make it not feel as bland maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your favorite type of client? Someone that comes in knowing exactly what they want and has like a vision board or someone that has no idea what's even what to look for and just wants you to like help them kind of drill it out of them. So I think, I think it can be both. And I think it's, you know, someone comes in with it with a vision board that can be, Great. I would just say as long as they have an open mind. So as long as, you know, as long as they have an open mind and, you know, they're open to looking at different things. Some people do come in and they have an idea of what they want and they'll come in and they'll show me, you know, like this inspiration picture. This is what I'm looking for. And, you know, trying to look at their space and seeing how can we, you know, not that we're, we're copying it because you, you know, when you have one space, you can't really copy paste it into another space, but you know, what are the, what do they like about it? And I, when they do have a picture, I try to say, okay, exactly. What do you like about that? Cause sometimes I start asking questions and I'll say, you know, they'll be like, this is my dream kitchen. And I'll be like, okay, what if we, what if we put that tile in, in your house? And they're like, 
Oh, oh no, I don't, I don't like that backsplash child, but this is what I like about it. So I'm trying to get out of them. What do you like about it? And how do we bring those elements out? And that's, you it's know, like an interrogation. It really they don't is. really know what they're doing, you know, but it's yeah. like for their benefit. They just don't, they might not see it as that, you know, but it does answer questions and help her get to that end result. Yeah. You're pretty much interviewing them. And when they really actually yes. hired you. Yes. Yes. I want to know, like, I want to know, you know, what's in your basement that you have to go get, you know, when you're cooking and what is not in your kitchen that you use that you have to go hunt in your house for? And how can we get that in the kitchen so that you don't have to go up and down the stairs or in and out of the garage or all over the house to try to find this thing that you use all the time, but you don't have any room for Those are the types of things that I want to know, because that's, you know, that's going to change the way they live in the house. Right. People oh, yeah. know what they don't like about the house more than what they like. You yeah, know, th- that's but, a more of a focus for people when they have a house. They're like, I don't like that. I have to go to the laundry in the basement, you know, whatever those things are. They, they indefinitely know what they don't like. So that's the first question is what are the problems with the house? What, you know, why are we here? And they kind of look at you for a second. And they're like, uh, what do you mean? They're like, well, you know, besides cosmetically, you don't like your kitchen. Why? Well, cause my husband, and I can't cook at the same time or something or, right. you know, whatever, whatever it's yeah. like, she said, digging down into those questions that kind of answer a deeper question of, what's the reason behind it? You know, besides it's ugly. Okay. Well it's ugly, but what doesn't work about it for you? You know, well, yeah. my fridge is way over here or it's the, you know, whatever those qu- answers are. Yeah. I find a lot of the people that come in and they know what they want. Don't really know, want that. Cause when you right. get the functionality yes. of it, <laughs> there's no yeah. way that works with your lifestyle. Yeah. That's why I start asking questions. I don't, I I'll never say, Hey, that's not, well, sometimes I say that, Hey, that's not going to work. It depends on where we are in the process. I do get to a certain point where sometimes I'll start saying stuff and I'll just say, Nope, we're not doing that. Um, you know, but at the beginning, it's more like digging into like, okay, here's the reality of what you're showing me. And then they're like, Oh, maybe I don't want that. So, but I mean, doing, you know, putting the videos out and being on social media, people getting to see this process, you know, like Paul said, they kind of know what they're getting into before they call us. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's a different type of client it's a different you know like where there are people who will watch our videos and watch our stuff for you know a year plus before they actually call us so you know so when they come in a lot of times they're you know they're ready they're ready for paul and all of his um you know funny things that he does (laughs) um you know so like they you know they get to know us before they call us and that's a very different um call um you know, than someone, than somebody cold, who's just looking for a contractor and doesn't know, you know, what they're kind of walking into. So from a business perspective that has, you know, it changes the type of calls that you do get because if people watch us and they're like, you know, okay, I don't like, I don't like those two. They're not going to call us. Right. So the people yeah. who do call us are, you know, they kind of know what we're about and they know what they're getting. Yeah. It kind of, it like kind of weeds people. We're not everybody's yeah. contractor and they're not all our clients right. as much yeah. as people might not want to admit that sometimes, but that's just the truth. Right. And, you, and you're together for a long time. You know, when we meet them for the first time, we're with them from that point to, it could be a year, two years, three years, who knows, even five, 10 years later, if we're doing something else now. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. So we have to get along. And that's what we try to just more emphasize is like, look, if, if you don't really like what we do, you know, that's okay. We're not offended. You know what I mean? Like you, maybe there's another contract that suits you better. It's okay. You know, like, yeah, we understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like, since it's important, you know, it's crazy. Cause we've had people sometimes we've had one client literally, she called us. She's like, I've seen everything you guys do. I love it all. Here are my keys. Call me when it's done. She moved out and left. You know, so that's crazy. it's like, and that's what the video and I was like. Do you want to look at tiles? She's oh like, gosh. no, yeah, she would literally no. not she's even like, go look at it. She's yeah. like, literally, oh, just call me when you're done. I was yeah. like, okay, she's then like, I have more I pressure you. on me. <laughs> yeah, that's stressful. Yeah, stressful for Susan, not for me. Yeah, yeah. For Susan, you know, she's like, wants to make sure they love it. You know, right. yeah, exactly. So, but obviously, I, social media has made a huge increase in your business. What yeah. advice do you have for someone? That's kind of like what you were like in the beginning. You didn't want to see yourself in the video. How do you, what would you tell them to get them to build up the confidence or to just start out doing it? I would say just jump in. Like when, so when we hired our videographer, he said, so should we sit down and talk about what we're going to film? And I was like, nope, we're just going to film. You're going to figure it out. And then I'm not going to, I actually, for a long time, I would not watch the videos that went out because I would, I would say no to all of them. 
Cause I said, I, I'm not going to watch them and I'm not going to be the person who posts because we will have zero videos. Yeah. Because I, I, I mean, sometimes I go back and I'm like, oh my God, we posted this. But that's also <laughs> a testament to having confidence in the people that work with you. Right? right. So like, it's like, he's in, he's, that's his field. It's not ours. So it's like, all right, how does he view it? Cause everybody looks at things differently. Yeah. So it's like, it's, oh, yeah. it's a better take too. You just gotta let it go. You just gotta let it go and, and jump in. And you know what? They're not all going to be perfect. Some of them yeah. are, you know, some things are going to go out that you're like, oh my God, we need to delete that. Um, you know, I mean, and then some things are going to go out like Paul has is, um, you know, we had one just kind of like, uh, you know, video Paul was in a master bathroom testing out. We had the bidet. Remember the, the Kohler toilet? The Kohler yeah. toilet. Yeah, the Kohler sm- it's a Kohler smock toilet. Yeah. So. so Paul decided to fully clothe it to get on and test it while we're all sitting in the bathroom. I, I tested the bidet. Got to make sure it works. <laughs> you know? I wanted to see, I had the right pants on where it would like squirt my pants. I could see yeah. where the area that it would squirt. The so, aim was you know, amazing. And it was perfect. To me, it was a no brainer. <laughs> you know, I was like, I want to tell the client this thing works well. It, it's right. good. You, you know? demonstrated it. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's okay. it's okay to be silly and have fun if you're spending a lot of money. I think that's yeah. it. like I said. At the end of the day, nobody's dying. You're trying to make something beautiful for you, your family, whoever, and you know you got to enjoy that process too, right? It's stressful, oh, yeah. but it also should be enjoyable. You know, like yeah. it's it's a milestone to do a major renovation. You know, so um, it's it's just interesting. You know, a lot of times, you know, sometimes we we always want clients to come like look at our projects, right? You know, because how do you hire someone, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars with them, and then never see anything physically right so oh, yeah. we have the videos kind of draws people in and we're just being us you know we're not actors this is just who we are and then from there you know we'll meet clients they'll come look at some stuff and then it just sets a very comfortable pace off the beginning you know yeah. it's less of a convincing of like you should hire us you should hire us and it's more of a like right there's hey. none of that like yeah. you get past that that's what the video will really do for people they'll get to know you and if they like you, they'll call you. And if they don't, they won't. And you can reach a much bigger uh, quantity of people that way and weed yeah. people out and draw people in by doing that. You're just being transparent. Hey, this is us. If you guys like us, give us a call. If you don't, we understand. Yeah, it gives it a whole new, um, I mean, anybody could put out a picture on their social media page of marketing yourself saying that you do kitchens or bathrooms or home renovations, but giving the video portion of it, of you guys actually working out, kind of gives you like the personality to your social media page. Yeah. And that, I think that speaks wonders on, even if you look on other people's like yourselves um, and they have high followers too, um, um, it looks like they have less interaction um, when they don't have the videos, they just have pictures, less likes, um, less um, engagement rate with the whole brand itself. Um, it's kind of funny you say that when you said you didn't like, um, watching your videos, cause I don't edit this podcast at all. Um, unless there's like a little bits and parts, like people have to take out. Yeah. Also, I don't want to see myself. So <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Yeah. All right. I walked so into my, have- I walked into my parents' house like last week or the week before, and they were watching one of the podcasts and I'm like, Oh, <laughs> grabbed my dog and just like went to the other room. Like That's I can so not do that. <laughs> It, That's it, hilarious. It's funny too, because there's a lot more people that watch than you think. Because we'll be out and I might see somebody I haven't seen for a long time. And they're like, hey, you've seen the videos, are hilarious. They say something like that. Yeah. They never like, they never comment. They, ne- you know, people engage and watch and it's like people watching that's what that's what social media is right you're not sitting on a bench in the city looking like oh, that guy looks funny this guy you know you're people watching online now that's what people do right yeah. it's an and that's way. sort of what led to the show is where you know where already we've been putting these videos out and it's, it's just been us we haven't had clients on the social media videos and you know we get comments and you know some people started saying you know what you know when are you going to start putting clients in when are, you know when are we going to see a show and that's just kind of what led down that down that path so and yeah the app is, you know, just, a, just a way we have an, you know, an audience on social that isn't just local. So, you know, the show air airs locally on TV, but some people are like, okay, how can I watch it? So the app is a way that, you know, anyone can see the show and there's, you know, 10 full episodes on there. And each one is a full renovation. It's a separate client. There's a reveal, um, you know, and that experience was really, really fun. You know, it's humbling to be yeah. part of that and like watch it back and see it. That's the one thing oh, I yeah. will say about video is like, like you said, you don't like watching yourself. I 
I've learned a lot from watching myself. You know, you might be, you might be like in a moment in, you know, yeah. when you're filming or you're doing something that, you know, you're not really conscious that you're doing, but when yeah. you watch it back, you know, she might be like, you, you were out of your mind that day. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I watch it and I'm like, oh, you know, when you're in that moment, you don't recognize it, right? Yeah. But when you watch it back, it definitely puts you more on alert and you're like, oh, okay, now I understand, you know, so it, it definitely has helped me, I feel like, in that aspect, too, of, you know, kind of recognizing things like that that probably you never would, right? Because you don't oh, yeah. watch yourself every day and be like, oh, that's how I was today. That's how I was yesterday. You know, it just really, it teaches you about you. You got to learn to be comfortable with yourself, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you can't be afraid. You put yourself out there. There's going to be people like you. There's going to be people that don't. But, you know, at the end of the day, as long as, you know, you're a good person, you try to do the right thing, that's all that matters, you know? Yeah. I'll get to the point where I watch my videos, but I have family members <laughs> that tell me what I do wrong. So <laughs> I'll tell <count> them. <laughs> That's funny. Awesome. So I want to finish on what pe where people could follow you at on social media, YouTube, Instagram, and then where they could find your app. Sure. Yeah. So our social media is all at Cadillac Homes. Spelled with a K. Spelled with a K, though. Just make sure. We're two right. Ks. Two K. Well, yeah. It, yeah. It's K A D I L A K. So it's it's spelled. You know, it is Cadillac. So it's Cadillac Homes on Instagram. A lot, ton of our videos are actually on Facebook. And that's something else just real quick. So we started putting our videos out on Facebook because that's one, that's where our clients are. And two, there's there's not a lot of video competition on Facebook. So, you know, unlike YouTube, sometimes you can, you know, you kind of a, a grain of well, sand yeah. at the beach, right? But on Facebook, I think we've had like 4 million video views on Facebook. Wow. Um, so it's um, so just a little thing to think about when you're thinking about where your clients are. Yeah, know your audience, right? Yeah. So yeah. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and then the app is, oh, and also we're on Pinterest as well. And then the app is called Renovation Rekindle, and that can be downloaded, you know, just in the app store on, you know, Apple, Google Play, any of those. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Susan Paul, for joining me today. I can't wait for everybody to see this and hopefully more people watch um, your show and follow you and just hopefully we could stay in touch and talk more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, we appreciate you having us on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay.